Welcome to Camping with Steve. We've got a brand new tent today and we're just going to do some normal, regular, late fall camping in an ice fishing hut. Uh, it's an insulated one. Some of you will remember my old one. That one is uh, seen better days. It's now pretty much a storage structure in my yard because we're having zipper issues. But uh, it had a good life. I've slept in that thing probably hundreds of times. So. Uh, Without further ado, we're going to try this this new one. It's an otter insulated, so a lot heavier. Hopefully, just as easy to hook up. This is my first time ever trying it. It's the same type of a hub system as my other tent. Looks like we're going to have a lot of good fire starting material with us today. That's excellent. We'll see if this sets up nice and easy like the last one did. nice quality really good stitchmanship if that's a word uh, it sets up just like the other one did uh, actually it's a little harder to push the side panels out and that's probably a good thing because then they won't push in so easy if the wind blows so I'm gonna get this set up so that we can camp in it tonight I really like the door system it's got two zippers that come to a point my other one had like a curve in the zipper and that's where we got into some issues with it. So it's got a lot of uh, a lot of windows. It, the insulation value feels pretty good. It's actually uh, don't have a heater on or anything, and it's actually feeling a little bit toasty. So we'll haul in some stuff and make this place a little more like home. So now that all that nonsense of setting up camp is taken care of, move along to do a step number two. And we'll look around here before the sun sets. Because it's that time of year where the sun likes to go down at about 3.30. And we're left uh, sitting around in the darkness for the rest of the evening. But uh, not bad scenery, not a bad campsite to be honest. And free. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I should have got this tent years ago. The insulation makes such a difference. Wow. Um, so we got our glamping set up here. A couple of cots with a foamy for beautiful wife and I. Brought her along in this adventure. Uh, Mr. Buddy Heater is going. I had to turn that down to low because it was getting too hot in here. Um, views of the lake right out there. I, I really like the amount of windows in this thing. I should have got this years ago, um, but the other ice fishing hut did work uh, quite well. I don't know if I have the heart to cut a hole in it to put a stove in here, but that, I don't know, I guess it's on the table. It is nice to have a wood, wood fired stove, but we'll assess the performance uh, with the buddy heater and uh, we'll go from there. So let's look around before the sun sets. Awful lot of driftwood washes up on these shores. 
It's a hydroelectric reservoir actually, so it fills up in the summer, empties down throughout the winter. It's really breathtaking, I think. We are in a provincial recreation site, which is a little bit different than a provincial park. There's about seven or eight sites here. They're free this time of year. And in the summer, they're actually surprisingly cheap considering uh, the scenery and everything, but there's no amenities, so bring your own toilet paper. There's tons of driftwood around here that we could use for a fire, but I find driftwood a little bit stinky when it burns, and I find it a little hard to light, unless it's really been sitting there baking in the sun for a while. So there's another campsite in this uh, campground that has a big pile of firewood. We're gonna go uh, harvest a little bit of that, and next time we're out, we'll bring some to pay it forward for the next people. Just perfect, this is good stuff. On closer inspection, when I picked up the wood, it looks like it was chopped down by park staff and just left for folks to uh, enjoy. Some of it is quite green, some of it's quite heavy, but I got a heaping helping of garbage from the car. So we can kill two birds with one stone here and light up a fire. Something that usually works when you're bushcrafting a fire is all the grease that soaks into the takeout food bags. Helps keep things burning. And if you're going camping for the first time or if you really want cheap camping gear, you grab one of these little full sets of stuff from a miscellaneous uh, store and it's about thirty dollars and you get the full full set and you know then you're not wrecking your stuff from home i was so happy about uh, this cheap cookware the problem is the wind is really messing up my butane stove here and the cold temperatures I'd love to throw this on the fire, but it's got plastic handles on it. And look at that measly little flame there. It's just not gonna work. I'm gonna have to try and warm these cylinders up uh, or do something. Yeah, that's, that's awful. The weather is wreaking havoc on this situation here. And uh, think of this as cooking advice. Crushed red peppers. In you go. The garlic. <laughs> A little bit of minced stuff ready to go. Let's get going. And I'll crack an egg into one for beautiful wife here. And I'll probably throw in a few pieces of uh, a few particles of frozen uh, broccoli. And that should be a, a very good meal. And I'll throw my steak on. And that's just the way it goes around these parts. How could I forget? A freshly cracked open package of black pepper, um, pulverized already, but and uh, yeah, clearly Gordon Ramsay is uh, rolling in his grave, He's getting ready to come out here and uh, show me what's what.
that miserable little flame. Yeah, that's not good. wife does not really enjoy steak so that's why we've got an egg for her and uh, this could be dressed up with little parmesan there we go so I'm gonna get back to my meal here in a second as soon as I bring this into uh, lovely wife Everything's blowing away on us, but uh, there, there's steak, so that's a good thing. I don't know if the wind, probably not. <laughs> but. Oh yeah. Well, at least it's not well done, so that's that's a good thing. Mm. I'm gonna eat this and get to bed right away, right away. All right, food was great. Uh, nothing else was really working that well tonight. But uh, after a night of uh, unexpected issues, uh, time to hunker down, so to speak. Um, thank you to everybody who's donated to make these adventures possible, for better or for worse. Sometimes they're uh, really majestic, amazing things. Sometimes, uh, Things don't go quite as planned. Uh, and thanks for uh, everybody that's bought merch. Uh, and also thanks to all the folks that have donated Bitcoin. Uh, I really <laughs> was surprised that people wanted to send Bitcoin. So uh, thanks, thanks all. And uh, we're going to hunker down for the remainder of what's left of the night. We spent uh, a lot of the evening trying to stop the tent from blowing away and uh, I know you can put pegs in obviously but uh, on frozen loose gravel it really doesn't work out that well um, so we're gonna tinker with this setup in the future for sure but uh, thanks guys for following along as long as you have and uh, yeah I gotta crawl into there and uh, We'll see you guys in the morning. Uh. 
Well, that was a really crazy night. Uh, basically, gale force winds the entire night. We managed to tie one corner of the ice fishing shack onto a tree, and the other corner onto a rock, and it didn't blow away on us, but it was close. I don't know how much sleep I got, but it wasn't a lot. I just kept having visions of this thing blowing into the lake and just sitting here on a, on a cot in the middle of a campground. So the tent performed really well though. If we were better prepared for the weather that we experienced, this would have been an awesome night, but it came out of left field. I guess if you're right beside a lake in a huge mountain valley, expect that there could be some wind. Um, in Alberta, usually in the prairies, we don't get wind quite like this. And typically when I go in the other ice fishing hut, just the gear that's in it holds the, the thing in place, like the, the cots and the stove kind of keep it from blowing away. Uh, but no such luck uh, for us on this one. So no condensation anywhere. Uh, it's completely dried out. Mind you, it didn't get that cold last night. So if it was seriously cold, I don't see how this wouldn't get condensation on it. But uh, it was almost too hot for me last night. I had to strip right down. It was uh, a real scorcher. So we're gonna pack this up. I'm not even gonna bother to try and cook breakfast because uh, it's, uh, it's just too windy, too windy and miserable. We have to get out of here. It's we slept in a little bit. It's around noon uh, as we start to film this. And uh, of course the sun's getting ready to set. Uh, just a couple more hours of daylight here. Yeah. So we're gonna throw this all in uh, to the car and we're gonna get out of here. some pretty extreme wind last night so uh, I'm really glad that that tent didn't blow away because I'm seeing a lot more uh, evidence of destruction out here on the back roads from uh, trees that have fallen over and you know we could have found a spot that wasn't out in the open like that and it would have had less wind but it would also be in the squishing radius of trees if they came down so we don't need that but uh, we have got to make some tracks here. So thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. Um, if you like these adventures, please subscribe. And uh, we will see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Cheers.